There's a lot of YouTubers out there. Too many, some would say. And there are some that look and maybe even sound alike. And there are some that make rather large mistakes. Today we're talking about one of those people. YouTube's biggest creep, as said by a few people. And for some reason, I have a connection to that person. Not through talking to them or knowing them or watching their content, but because so many people say that I look like this individual. Comments that I've stretched back for literal years. All the way back even seven years ago, I have been told that I look like this person, Mini Lad. And to be fair, he did make his channel before me, May 12th, 2011, compared to my paltry May 30th, 2011, 18 days before me. He is a year older than me. But also he's called YouTube's biggest creep. And I don't like being compared to YouTube's biggest creep. So today we're gonna look at the story and analyze the story of Mini Lad to see his rise, his fall, and why do people say I look like I don't sound like Mini Lad? Okay, I don't freaking sound like Mini Lad, all right? It's 2017 and you just get out of middle school or even high school. You get home, finish your homework assignments and start to relax. You turn okay. on YouTube and you see yep. that Vanoss uploaded a new GTA 5 funny moments video to his channel. You sit back and enjoy the video. Mini Lad is a prominent creator who is featured in almost are we, okay, are we saying that he looks like, well, I, oh no, I can, there's like some similar features, I guess. He has like, this, he has similar hair color a little bit. Oh my God, we wear the, wait, 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 we wear the same glasses. We wear like similar glasses. Okay, hold on, wait, wait, no. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch my glasses over to these uh, circular ones. There we go. Okay, so I do, see, I don't look like Mini Lad. I, I don't look like him at all. We look completely different. There is no similarities whatsoever to be uh, heard of at all. Also, th thank you to uh, Bills YC for letting me react to this video. I asked him and he said it was cool and said thank you. And I said, no, thank you, sir. <laughs> you did most of the work. Every single Vanos gaming video. But after a couple months, Mini Lad starts to appear less and less within the videos. So you start to look into the reason for why Mini Lad was excluded out of newer Vanos uploads. And you find out that Mini Lad just wanted to focus on his individual career, which was okay. But then a few months later, or even a year, later, Mini Lad would find himself in some drama between him and his ex-friends from the Vanos Gaming crew. Most no I want to be honest, I might be one of the only 27 year olds that didn't watch Vanos Gaming. I was much more of a fan of the creatures when they were around, which included Kutra, SSH PKC, Uber Hacks on Nova, Dan's Gaming and all that. Actually, I don't think I had Dan's Gaming in, but there was a lot of those creators that I really, really got into. I used to watch a lot of Game Grumps as well. In fact, I still watch Game Grumps. They're still pretty sick. I never got into the whole Vanos crew, and it seems like an entire section of YouTube that was massive that I never knew about. Which is crazy how big this website is, that there can be huge conglomerate groups of creators with millions of subscribers, millions of views, huge audiences, and you will never hear about them ever in your life. Notably with Terrorizer, who was Mini Lad's closest friend from the group. This beef escalated to a point of no return when old screenshots would pop up of Mini Lad being homophobic and racist on Twitter. Oh, and then, okay. A couple months Whoa, later, yeah, that's some, yeah, that's some bad stuff there. Appropriately Jesus. Minors. Multiple minors would come out against Mini Lad and his minors. Kids. And as a result, Mini Lad left the community for a few months, and would come back with an apology, but would later delete the original apology and videos related to the controversy to try to- Wait, he deleted the video? He said, nope, I'm actually not sorry. <laughs> he said, no, I'm sorry, I take back my apology. I'm not sorry at all. Sweep everything underneath the rug. But what has happened since then? Now, if you're new to the channel, I used to upload videos that would revisit some of the biggest creators that have been exposed in the past. This is because a lot of the time these creators get off scot-free and continue to upload as if nothing happened. This is true. There have been so many occurrences of people going out there doing the most horrific things and just getting off scot-free. You just come back and you start uploading again. Everyone's like, oh, well, I guess we'll just let them keep going. Like Shane Dawson has been blasted off the internet and then come back so many times. There's even been people that, oh, I don't know, make a course on how you can manipulate women into coming to a very secluded part of the world and you can force them to work on campsites for your own personal benefits and you can release a whole course on exactly how to do that kind of thing and people say actually no it's good that he did that he's just doing business guys come on not to mention logan paul scammed his audience like 15 times and they're still like logan do a backflip on wwe oh my god this series is to look at the creators months or even years after everything happened to see if anything has changed within their content 
Also, it's a way for me to look at creators from when I first started to create content in order to give a better overview of that creator and the drama surrounding them. Mostly because my older videos weren't the greatest, but if you enjoy this series, leave a like at the end of the video and also comment on which creator I should revisit next. Craig Thompson, also known on- Okay, he's five million subscribers. Almost. Well, he he probably got up there and then dropped below it after the whole I issue uh, arise with the uh, doing terrible things. He has 1.3 thousand videos. I have about 5,000. So I'm beating him on that. Let's go, baby. <laughs> beating him on that. That's fantastic. And he started his videos 11 years ago, which is around the same time that I started, which is... The, the similarities end there, obviously. Which he made how to be Russian and then channel update and channel update too. I find it really funny when people make channel updates when they have no subscribers. What are you updating? I mean, who, who are you updating, man? Um, as Mini Lad created his channel all the way back in 2011. Starting off his channel with a variety Another channel of different update. games and videos, it wouldn't be until a few months after creating his account that he stumbled upon the series trolling Call of Duty lobbies, and this gave Craig an identity. Craig would fit into Van Noss's crew, and together they would create the most entertaining videos during the mid-2010s. Call of Duty trolling online lobbies used to be a bigger franchise, a big had had a bigger market cap than like oil barrels or oil barons. Saudi oil princes would look at Call of Duty Duty online trollers with envy. They'd say, wow, maybe one day I'll have that much money. I really wish I could. They had so many views. They've completely fallen off now. No one really cares about that kind of content anymore. But there was a time where YouTube was absolutely inundated with millions of these videos. If you were on YouTube around 2013 and 2014, these videos were always recommended and Vanos and his crew were receiving millions of views each and every upload. This was more of a trickle down effect. Minilad, H. Do Delirious, Wildcat, Nogla, basically I Do Work, and Terrorizer all benefited the most by being in Vanoss's videos. Minilad on his own was growing pretty slow, but when he joined the Vanoss gaming crew, his views and subscribers started to grow extremely fast. From July of 2013, when Minilad only had 50,000 subscribers on his channel, that number would double to 100,000 subscribers in just three months after uploading more videos with the power of collaboration. If you start doing videos with people to get a lot of views, then you're gonna get a lot of views as well. It is simply the rising tide that raises all ships. It's why collaboration is such an important part of YouTube. It's why people do videos with each other. It's because not only do they like the other person, as presumably sometimes they, they don't like the other person, like Ethan Klein on Frenemies, and we all know how that ended. It just creates such a good opportunity for growth because you have like two fan bases that are fusing and, and like interchanging and intermingling and handshaking each other. Of Vanoss. It was noticeable how impactful Vanoss's channel was for Minilad, and before anyone knew it, Minilad went from 100,000 subscribers to over 500,000 subscribers in just Woo! a few months. Minilad was blossoming faster than a lot of creators on the platform, but Minilad also felt like his career was being overshadowed by Vanoss's career. Minilad what, I mean, okay, can we, to be fair, when you are part of one of these groups, you have to understand what is going on there. If you enter someone's friend group who has a lot of subscribers and you do videos with them, then clearly you're gonna grow a lot and that's fantastic. You're growing a lot, that's great. You know, you can be with your friends, you can make videos and then you can also profit at the same time. Fantastic, but you have to understand where those views are coming from. And it's probably coming from the channels that are bigger than you. Million subscribers when he started to feel this way about the group and would slowly start to distance himself away from Vanoss and his channel. Now, this wasn't a complete departure from the Vanoss gaming channel, and even at the time, I didn't even realize how many videos were uploaded to Vanoss's channel without Minilad being involved in that video. Vanoss is not like the team being called the Vanoss crew. Yeah, because obviously he's not, not a narcissist that wants everything to be around him. I completely understand that when you have a group of friends that you're playing with, if I had my group of friends, like imagine if me, Dylan, Luke, Vinny, who I all make videos with very regularly, was called like the Pirates crew. I'd be like, no, no, they're like, they're... They're their own people, it's not my crew, that doesn't make any sense. They all do amazing things on their own, they're all so talented. They are good, great creators, and everyone is just great creator that can stand alone by themselves. It's not a crew. Am I a narcissist? I don't think so. Video. 
I even stated this in my original video. Now, I honestly thought that Craig left the group in like 2017, but from a twit longer made from Brian, he states that Craig had left the group in 2015. Over on Mini Lad's channel, he'd start to upload more solo content and started to play more single player games by himself, only having a couple videos here and there that would showcase every person from the Vanoss gaming crew. He'd also switch up his thumbnails, which meant that it was an end of an era. This departure from the Vanoss gaming crew was minute, and if you weren't really paying attention or or if Mini Lad wasn't one of your favorite creators at the time, you really wouldn't have noticed. I can kind of understand why he'd want to go his own way and do his own thing and just kind of make his own videos because there comes to a certain point when you're making content, but you can't really decide whether you're making content because it is the thing that you genuinely want to do or because it's the thing that's going to get you the most views. And when you wake up one day and you think, actually, I don't really want to do this anymore, you may know that you're going to take a hit in views, but it's important to you to go and do something a little bit different. Maybe see if you can stand on your own two feet. And if you're a creator that's grown in a group, you want to see, well, can I do this by myself? Is it all just because I'm part of a group and you need to have that self-realization? So that does make sense. But this separation from Vanoss and the gang was beneficial for Mini Lad. His content was still growing and he was still pulling in a consistent viewership for each and every video. After leaving Vanoss, Mini Lad went on to hit three big milestones. 3 million, 4 million, and 5 million subscribers all on his own. Oh, well, he's uh, he's probably aiming to hit 5 million subscribers again at some point. Without the help of Vanoss's channel. Now, this was largely in part due to the new creators he started to collaborate with. Like when he and Mini Minter collabed in a bunch Wait, of videos that were side uploaded man? to both of their channels, expanding Mini Lad's audience to new parts of the internet. That's crazy because Mini Minter is just like a part of the Sideman. That's, that's a really strange crossover in my opinion. Sideman is one of the biggest YouTube groups in the UK. This, this just seems like a weird thing that has spawned out of nowhere. But then again, I feel like maybe people think that some of the stuff that I do sometimes is just a weird collaboration that doesn't really make sense as well. They like, all collaborate with a lot of poker tubers, but I also collaborate with people outside of that as well. After a while of creating content by himself, Minilad would start to throw some shade at some of his former friends. During a Mario Kart livestream in 2018, Minilad received a donation. This donation asked Minilad why he didn't play with Vanoss and the crew anymore, and he had this to say. I need to make sure I get these tight corners. I'm about to laugh someone. I'm a huge fan of your work. Keep it up. The only thing I want to ask is how come you don't play with Vinos oh, Gaming? Oh, wow. Because I don't play Gmod anymore. That's all he does. Question done. Not only did this comment... Oh, okay. I was going to say that. Sure, that's fine. I don't really think that's the best answer in the world. But when he said question done, that was like, I'm mad. I'm mad that you're asking me this. How dare you answer me this question? You come in here and you give me money and you ask that question. How dare you? It sounds like he was pretty mad about the question being asked at all. So maybe there was some kind of falling out with them. Maybe they're just not buds anymore. But saying like, I don't play Gmod. That's why. He only does play Gmod. Question over. It's a bit of a strange answer. And it's also really like aggro for some reason. Come out really aggressive. But Mini Lad also seemed a bit bitter in a way. This could be due to everyone asking that question over and over again, and maybe he was annoyed at just the question itself and had no intent with it being a dig on Vanoss in his videos. But Mini Lad just continued to throw shade constantly at Vanoss and the crew. During an event called Insomnia, Mini Lad's dog Mochi would unexpectedly die. So Min he went to Insomnia. Oh God, his dog died. Jesus Christ. I've been to Insomnia a few times. It's a pretty sick event, but imagine going to a gaming event and your dog dies while you're away. I mean, that's that's really sad. Like, listen, I can kind of understand that because I, I wasn't there when my dog died. So I understand that feeling. That's that's pretty bad. I wonder what this leads to, though. That's a pretty interesting thing to just like bring up out of nowhere. It must, must, lead, must lead into something. Mini Lad uploaded a video that explained what happened to the dog and how he forgave the people who are in charge of watching Mochi and explained that it was nobody's fault and things like that just happened. And he actually praised some of the people that were watching the dog because he said that they did everything that they could. Now off screen, they like started to become even more tense between Mini Lad and Terrorizer. They'd meet at different events like the E3 event and it wouldn't go too well. Craig continued to throw shade at Vanoss and his friends, like in one of his meme streams where Craig stated, What's he saying? No idea. They're still playing Gmod. Damn. For all this time, they're still hey, playing baby. Gmod? You like how I mean, they kicked me out of all their chat, so I have no idea what the hell they're doing, so. Perfectly they're still balanced. Damn. Damn. Be, yo. I wasn't kicked. Oh my god. All right. So, just to clear up any drama. Yeah, it sounds like he was kicked, buddy. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I'm going off and doing my own thing. And then oh, it's the... our face! All right. Just to clear up some shit. 
Uh, and I <laughs> Bro, is this a try not to laugh challenge? Oh my god, he's in the middle of a try not to laugh challenge. Is he like, you know what would be some good content right now? If I brought up some drama, baby. Yeah, I'm gonna ignore this video right now. Is this video screaming in my ear? I don't care. Here's some drama, baby. It's drama time. Kick. Uh, they, all they did was play Fortnite and Gmod and then talk shit about other YouTubers. So I said, fuck that. Uh, oh, he's exposing them. away from that group. I'm doing my own thing. I've never felt better. I'm my community stronger than ever. I'm pulling more views than ever. And I'm personally a lot more happy as a human. This okay, well, why why did you even bring any of that up? That seems like such an insane thing to bring up. I, did anyone even ask? Who asked? He, he felt like he needed to say that. That wasn't something that the chat was genuinely like chomping at the bit for an answer for. That seemed like something you really want to just get off his chest. He's like, listen, I'm not in that group anymore. I didn't get kicked though. They didn't kick me and I'm doing so well. I have so many views. I'm, uh, I'm happier than I've ever been in my entire life now. This was once again, a petty statement, which Minilad had to address midstream in order to make himself look like the victim. A couple weeks later, Terrorizer responded in his own stream stating, why not invite Mini? I'll tell you why. He doesn't play with us. He left and then he decided on stream to Bad mouth m myself and my friends. Well, mainly just my friends. Yeah, I, I don't know why you do that. that. So I don't play with the guy lately because he's going it just on. Just seems unnecessary, you know. Talking shit about us. It's not cool. So that's why he left the group to do his own thing. That's it. I, f I don't understand why some people find it so hard to understand. He. Oh no, people do this all the time with any kind of online relationship, with any kind of online falling out whatsoever. The conspiracy theorists get out, especially if you, have a, if you have a younger audience. If you're one of those channels that kind of appeals to maybe like, you know, like 13 to, to 20 year olds, the fan bases are gonna dig into it. They're gonna go onto the subreddits. They're gonna ask questions. They're gonna look at old tweets. They're gonna figure out the things no matter what. They're gonna go Sherlock on it. Left the group. He wanted to do his own thing. We were cool with that. We respected that. But I don't get why you leave a group and then talk shit about the group. We didn't kick you out, man. Now this back and forth started to get more and more personal. And Craig uploaded- Oh, so he did- Oh, they didn't kick him out. Sorry, I thought that that was Cope just coming from him, but they did not kick him out. I guess he left on his own accord. A statement to his Twitter account. It's deleted because Minilad went dark on his account, but it pretty much stated that Terrorizer was trying to make Minilad look like a bad person who hated all of his friends. And this painted Terrorizer out to be someone who was attacking Craig for no reason. Craig also stated that Brian was making fun of his mental health after his dog died. But Brian responded to that tweet stating, and I wish you all the best too, Craig. But that quote is pure slander. Accusing me of making fun of mental health is just wrong, Craig. There's more information you've omitted from this whole thing in order to paint a certain picture in the public's eye. Kinda low. Craig followed Brian's quote tweet up with his own quote tweet stating, it was a near quote. That's the whole reason I stopped the conversation at the 3BD party is because that comment. You know about my mental health struggle and that was a stab in the gut. If you really want to sort this, DM me. Brian replied one last time stating, that is a nowhere near quote, Craig. Your reason for your actions the day before was my dog just died. My reply was, Craig, my dad just died, but it doesn't oh give my me God. an excuse to mistreat others because of my personal issues. You can't Jesus Christ. and then ask for DM. Brian eventually uploaded a tweet longer that went in depth on what happened the night at E3. Now, I won't read the whole tweet longer because it is a lot, but I do want to read just some of the retelling of that event. Brian stated in the tweet longer, it started at E3 Monster Cat Party at Exchange LA. And while I was there, I bumped into Craig. After the party, we all decided to go back to someone's house. Craig offered, so we ordered an Uber to go there. In the Uber, Tyler made a joke about Craig's Ferrari, and thinking it was all in good fun, I joined in on the same joke. I was sitting in the seat in front of Craig, so I couldn't tell if he was bothered by the jokes which were based off a quote in the BBC News report about the local rugby team in his hometown he sponsored. When what? Okay, first off, he sponsors a local rugby team? That, that's kind of cool, I guess. But someone making a joke about your Ferrari, you can't get mad at that, come on. If you're, if you're rich enough to have a Ferrari, then you're rich enough to not be bothered by those types of jokes, who cares? Also, it's just poking fun at someone a little bit. I don't understand how you could really take offense to that. That seems kind of silly to me. We arrived at the house. People were rushing to the bathroom to use it. I made a joke as this was happening saying, let's pee in the pool. I ran out to the back of the pool and pulled my pants down to my ankles to pretend to pee. The night continued as normal without me thinking there was a problem. A weird Later joke. on, Craig went upstairs to his girlfriend who was in her room alone. Craig returned downstairs and soon after, he started to make it seem like my girlfriend and I were not welcome, so we decided
decided to leave. We ordered okay. an Uber, said goodbye, and went home just believing everything was fine, but still unsure if we just misinterpreted the scenario. You know what it seems like? It seems like whenever someone has already decided that they don't like a person, everything that they do becomes a attack against that person. The bias is in all of us. Whenever we don't like someone and we've already decided that we don't like it, anything that person does is now bad or slightly worse. Any joke that that person makes that if someone else made the joke, it would probably be completely fine. But that person making that joke? No, that's pissing me off. How dare you make that joke? You can't do that. You can't make that joke. I already don't like you. And I'm, I'm guilty of the same thing. I, and I think everybody else is guilty of the same thing. If we don't like someone, then they're automatically, everything they do is worse. Moving on to the next day. For context here, the previous day, we had a group text to chat about having a group dinner the following day. Craig took it upon himself to book the table for this dinner and included everyone in the booking while omitting my girlfriend and me on purpose without telling us. Our group of friends are not in the same location very often, so this is a very rare instance of when the group can spend time together in person, which is really important to me. My girlfriend and I didn't attend the dinner because we weren't invited to it and only found out about the dinner only three hours before the reservation at 6 p.m. Marcel had found out that I had been excluded from the reservation and brought it to my attention. Marcel wanted to know why I wasn't invited and then Craig replied saying I'll talk to you about this tonight if you're out. At the dinner I was told Craig proceeded to discuss the night before and said I was making everything awkward for others with the Ferrari joke and pool joke specifically. Okay maybe the pool joke because he said he was gonna piss in the pool which I can understand why people be like eh, that's kind of weird like why is he doing that that's a bit weird and he actually like pulled his trousers down which they said in the tweet longer that he pulled his trousers down. So I can understand why that would make people uncomffortable. But a Ferrari joke? Like, what do you say about the Ferrari? Did he say he was going to have sex with the Ferrari? What, what was the Ferrari joke that made people uncomfortable? After my dinner with my girlfriend, we went to a party where all of our friends group were going so we could meet up. At one point in the night, Craig approached me and opened up the conversation with a half-hearted awkward laugh and a hi. I stopped him immediately from speaking because I was so upset about the way he handled things up to this point and the way he laughed while saying hi I felt like this wasn't a serious issue to him. I said, I'm going to talk to you like a man should and say things directly to your face and not behind your back and text to everyone else but me. If you had a problem with things that I said last night, all you needed to do was talk to me directly about it and I would have happily apologized. I meant no malicious intent in any of the jokes that I made and I joined in on jokes so accusing me of starting the joke is not fair. I thought it was- Sure, he said that Tyler started the joke, which I believe is Wildcat. Yeah, this looks like some pretty good communication. He's kind of accepting any kind of blame that he may have done if he did anything wrong. He's like, hey, I'm sorry. Like, I wish you would have told me when I did the thing wrong face to face instead of excluding me from a dinner. Excluding someone from a dinner just randomly when you invite all your other friends just seems antagonistic and unnecessary because you know it's going to come to a head at some point because the person is going to be like, hey, guys, what's going on? Why am I not invited? And then you're going to have to have that conversation regardless. It just seems kind of petty to exclude someone rather than talking to them directly. Have some time where we were all together as a group. I ended it with, that's everything I want to say to you. Have a good night and just leave me alone. Craig said, okay, and walked away. You stated in your tweet that I made fun of your mental health and that's the whole reason I stopped the conversation. You didn't end any conversation. You didn't really say much and I never said, it's so sad you're too effed up in the head to take a joke anymore. That that's a crazy thing for anyone to say to anyone, but he did not say that. If anyone did though, that's insane. It never left my lips and I 100% refute that accusation entirely. Now this tweet longer shined a light on the type of person Mini Lad was. He took everything Brian said and flipped it into something horrible to try and bury Brian and his channel. But from this recounting of the events and with Craig never responding, it seemed like this was in fact the truth. That same it could be that that was a truth or some people sometimes take the approach where they just disengage completely from a subject and they're like, I'm never going to talk about the subject. I'm never going to engage with it, which can lead people to believe that one person's side is completely accurate, but it could also be not completely accurate. I couldn't tell you what happened in this situation. It seems like that might be the accurate retelling of events because if it wasn't, you come out and be like, oh no, of course not. This is completely wrong. What are you talking about? Year, Minilad won an award from YouTube 
which also helped his growth in the platform. But once again, Craig was called out for lying about how him and Brian were trying to patch their friendship. Craig stated that he saw Brian backstage for a Van Oss concert and they shook hands and spoke. But Brian stated that it didn't happen that way. Well, Brian, we're figuring things out. You know, we, we talked backstage at Evan's show and we, we shook hands and we're, we're going to work on it. So like, you know, I miss the dude and it's good to see things coming together. So yeah. He, pl he played successful, epic, energetic music. Like, guys, we're gonna do it. It's gonna be amazing. We're gonna be friends again. And then the response from Brian. I don't particularly want to work with the guy. I know he made a video saying we're patching things up, which is not true. <laughs> um... I feel like he wow. says things in order to kind of get flack off of his back. Later that year, Craig finally That's apologized. That's a completely different response. Could not be more different. to Brian and the community saying, This is well overdue. I wanted to start this off by just saying sorry. What's going on between you and I, I should have kept it private and tried to fix it there, but I snapped and crumbled. Is that an excuse? Of course not. I've been a bad friend. I've said things that I regret and I wish I could take them back. Brian, we used to be best friends and some of my favorite memories are with you both off screen and on screen. I miss you and I hope we can eventually get back to a point where we can be friends again. I hope we can work okay, this out. Okay, this is I'm a pretty good response. Sorry, I haven't been a good friend, but I hope you can find some way of forgiving me. Hopefully someday I can buy you a beer. To the fans, I've hurt by this mess. This is a public message. Sorry. A lot of you come to our videos for an escape from your own lives and seeing turmoil in your escape isn't fair on you. For those who choose not to forgive me, I understand. I hurt you too. I hope that we can all move past this, but it will take time. I'm admitting my faults and I'll- More manipulation? Back. It could be. I mean, he could be very- not genuine about this. He, he might not mean what he's saying here. I think if you're trying to make an actual apology, then you just have to admit your faults. You have to admit that you're completely wrong or you're, you have to admit whenever you have been wrong, you have to apologize for that. Really internalize what you did that made that mistake and try and work on not falling into the same thing again. This on writing seems like a good apology if he is genuine about becoming friends with Brian again. We don't know what's going on inside his mind. You never can. Who knows if he was being genuine or not. Thank you for reading and have a This isn't even message. the bad part of the drama. This apology uh. came in early June of 2020, but if we all remember correctly, June was the same time where Minilad was exposed for inappropriate interactions with his female fans who were underage. Oh, oh dude, what? I mean, I, we heard it before and I've heard it in the past. But just hearing that again is fucking insane. Why? Why Why do so many YouTubers do this? This all came to light when Minilad's ex-girlfriend, Samantha, uploaded a series of tweets stating how Minilad was manipulative and toxic. On Twitter, Samantha tweeted out, No, Sometimes. Craig didn't R-word me, but it was an extremely toxic and manipulative relationship. He messaged me and a few of my friends to make sure I didn't say anything about him specifically. He wanted me to clarify, so here you go. Along with this tweet were screenshots of how manipulative Craig Craig was, and now he wanted to make sure that Sammy specifically stated that she was not speaking about Minilad. So Sammy was the ex-girlfriend. Would you? Well, here you go. Is it possible to go back and? Okay, so let's go back and look at the messages. Can you please clarify on what you said on Twitter isn't about you? I know you've had issues in the past with boyfriends before me, but I need you to make sure that people know it's not about me and before your exes beforehand. Look, Craig, I told you when I was supposed to start a day and that wouldn't forgive you if you hurt me. Uh, okay, so he's trying to get her to publicly say that it wasn't about mini lads. Sammy, I guess they are not together at this point. That is interesting. I've, I've been in, it's, it's weird. I've actually been in like a similar situation where an ex would be, would go on Twitter and say like a very vague thing about this person, very, very bad. And then someone would insinuate that it was about me. And she said, no, of course not. It's actually like, he was very good to me and like things ended, whatever, which I, I appreciate. Uh, I didn't say anything publicly about that, but making very vague comments can lead people to speculate. So I guess he was like, I don't want people to speculate that this is about me, but I don't think that you should go out of your way to say, or, or to go into the DMs or in the messages and be like, hey, can you go and say that it's not about me and I'm actually great? You is starting that conversation seems a little weird to me. Sure that Sammy specifically stated that she was not speaking about Minilad when she was tweeting out her experiences with previous relationships. Craig went as far as to reach out to Samantha's friends in order to spread the message. He asked multiple people to ask her as well. 
Yeah, I mean, I guess he was desperate for Sammy to make some kind of comment like, no, no, it's actually not Mini Lad. No, he's awesome. I, I don't know. That feels really uncomfy. It's to Sammy. Not only that, but Craig lied about going to see a therapist for his mental health and also stated that his 2019 year on YouTube was supposed to be awesome, but blamed her for ruining it. This all what? happened the day before the bomb exploded. For Wait, he went on a video and said that? He, he went on a video and said, I was supposed to have a really good YouTube year where I played Grand Theft Auto and Mario Kart and my girlfriend ruined it. And no wonder she didn't want to go on Twitter and issue a correction. What do you mean? What? Now on June 23rd, 2020, two women uploaded Twitlongers exposing okay. their experience with Minilad. The two women were Holly and Ash. Two people Craig was friends with, but he took advantage of. I'll start off. Dude, okay, first off, Craig was friends with. It says, in that twit longer, I just caught it, that she was 16. That she was six, a 16 year old fan. You can't be friends with a 16 year old fan. Come on, man. That's just weird. That screams power imbalance. It screams into the high heavens. You should not be interacting with your underage fans. Come on, stop. Don't do that. Off with Holly's twit longer. Before I move on to Ash's twit longer. During Holly's twit longer, she'd say, honestly, do not. I was manipulated by Mini Lad. I was 16 slash 17. He was 20 plus. What was in replies? Oh, God. I'm not doing good. I'm not doing this because I hate him. I am disappointed Remember in him. Remember okay. when or why Craig and I started talking more? I think it was more so I was worried for him and tried to be a good friend because of the breakup at the time. So I'll Who in their 20s wants to hang out with a 16 year old that, you know, isn't an absolute weirdo creep. I can't imagine you're in such like different parts of your life. You have nothing in common. I, it always surprises me when someone who's like 30 wants to date an 18 year old. I'm like, how, what are you even gonna talk about? They're in university like doing lectures and you're working a full-time job at an office going in and doing the daily grind as a assistant manager. There's nothing in common. You can't talk about anything. I don't understand. For him direct messaging him through Twitter during my classes, listening to his worries about his ex, or even just to talk. Then things started to get more personal and darker with the conversations. He would go to me for venting to see if there were ways to get back to his ex or help what? change and whatnot. Of course- Dude, this is a 16 year old. You as a 20 plus year old man cannot go to a 16 year old and and complain about your ex-girlfriend and say, how am I gonna get revenge on my ex-girlfriend? Me trying to be a good friend, I listened to everything he had to say and even said, sure, there is hope in changing her and shit like that. Even shit talked about her with him, which was very wrong of me. I'll admit I was being a bit of an ass kisser. Reason being was I had a crush on him. Of course, because if you are a impressionable young person and you finally have a conversation with the person that you've looked up to for a while, you've watched their videos, and especially being younger, you're gonna wanna say anything that pleases them. You're gonna say anything that makes them like you, that makes you that makes them talk to you more, because you're super young. You're not well versed in like interactions between people with power imbalances. You got this this older man who is very famous online, probably has a lot of money, and then you have this younger girl who looks up to this person, and thinks, "Oh my god, he's so funny, so cool. Like, I, it'll be cool. It's so awesome that I'm able to talk to him." Of course, she's gonna say anything that she can to keep that conversation going and kind of get that uh, relationship deeper because she looks up to you, and it's up to you as the creator or as the older person to understand that that's a wrong thing to be doing. I knew that. I had to sometimes sit and listen to him talk about how he got an erection over his ex or whatever. What? Despite him knowing how I felt about him. But then, don't remember why, but we were joking around to where I said something about his D being small. I guess he took it personally, as you will see in the replies of our conversation that no. started on Twitter, that he moved to Discord so he could delete photos he sent me. He sent me pictures of him in no. his underwear to show off his bulge of his pee, which oh, I did dude. not ask for at all. I want to clarify that the reason I was acting cool with it was because I had an effing crush on him. So whatever, right? And so didn't really know better. Remember, I was a minor. I was 16. He knew that. He knew that I lost- I swear to God, if anyone says, Oh, well, actually, 16 is legal in the UK. I'm gonna snap my own neck. I'll do it. I'll snap my own neck in front. I'll, I'll do it right now. Him. Sent me those photos to someone he knew liked him for a, a boost of ego. The worst part is, I was not the only person he, he has done this.
Why would he post crimes? Discord's American, right? Isn't that like, isn't that illegal? With someone else who will come out that I will retweet. She experienced much, much more weird shit to say to an effing minor. That will be Ash's place to say. I think a year after the situation happened with him sending me photos, I confronted him about it and he apologized and said he knew he hurt me and regrets it. However, it makes me question if he said that just so I didn't turn against him and help expose him. The fact Oh dude, he was probably absolutely shitting himself at that point, of course. That whole situation? No wonder- Yeah, he, he would say literally anything. Hey, listen, if you're a manipulative person and you've been posting your crimes, or at least things that are very, very close to the edge of crimes, depending on where you live and uh, where you're being prosecuted could be crimes, are you gonna say anything to make sure that those crimes don't get put out publicly in twit longers like this? I even had to question it, even to this day, truly says a lot. When he and Sammy got together, I told him if he was to date her, he should be honest about the creepy shit he has done. He said he would, then later told me he wouldn't. Yeah, no, of course he's not gonna do that. He's not gonna be like, hey, Sammy, uh, I, I, I know we've been dating for a while. I know they've been hanging out. It's been really fun. I sent dick pics to a 16 year old on Discord. Just wanted to get that out in the open. Pretty sure you're cool with all that. Like, I know, it's a little weird, but uh, do you want to go to dinner? We can get sushi or why are you leaving? Why are you leaving, Sam Sammy? Sammy? I shrugged it off and I had hope maybe he would come to his senses. I only just found out now that he never said a damn word to her and I had to be the one to tell Sammy. The only reason why I was brought up though before with the whole you should tell her was because he was being threatened to be exposed by someone who I will not publicly name who was friends with Ash. He was scared of losing his career and how it would ruin his friendships. Craig, if you didn't want that, you shouldn't have done what you did in the first place and not Facts. used your actions with being depressed and suicidal. Oh, I hate it when people do that. That is so annoying. That is taking away actual harm that depression and those kind of thoughts do to people who genuinely think them. Um, maybe he does genuinely think them, but it's not an excuse. It's never an excuse. That's that's ridiculous. It's dampening what people actually think of people who are depressed because like you can't use that as a way to get out of terrible situations that you personally put yourself in. Being depressed doesn't make you send dick pics to minors. You manipulated me into keeping my mouth shut for so long because I was terrified of what you could do to yourself. That goes for a lot of people who knew about the situation. There's no excuse for you being the way you were with underage girls, such as myself at the time. Now this tweet longer was a huge story at the time and to see two women come out against Minilad on the same exact day within the same couple of hours was extremely big. A big excuse- I think the main reason why you see tweet longers come out about the same person very quick succession is because people feel strength in numbers. So as soon as the dam breaks, everything floods out because people have a lot more confidence in sharing their stories and being believed. If they see someone else do it first, they're like, okay, if they are brave enough to do it, then I can do it as well, which is good. You know, it's strength in numbers and it, they, they help lift each other up. And um, there's always going to be detractors. There's always going to be people being dicks about it online. So once you see someone else getting support, then you're like, okay, well, maybe I can make it through this. this Mini Lad always stated was that he was depressed or suicidal, which was a manipulation tactic into keeping these women quiet. Now, Ash's experience with Craig was pretty bad. So let's take a look at her tweet longer and just see what happens there. Ash states, okay. he followed me and sent a DM to say he would not have been added to the group chat if it hadn't been for me. I was confused as I had no part in him joining the group chat, but was excited anyways. He told me if I ever needed anything, I could reach out. And then he began to discuss his recent breakup and how poorly it was affecting his mental health. So I told him, Wait, what? He immediately started talking about his breakup? We were so excited to talk to someone we looked up to. A little later, he followed me and sent me a DM so you would not be added to the group chat. Wait, so he added this person and then immediately started talking about his breakup? How do you just vent personal details like that immediately? He could do the same. I was over the moon to feel so close to the person I was infatuated with. We were casually friendly for a while with many tweets back and forth and the occasional DM. He added me on Snapchat where we chatted here and there. Nothing super deep. Now things took a sharp turn when we were chatting on Snapchat one day and the subject of virginity came up. Yes. How did that come up? Oh, I wonder who brought up that subject. Virgin, and I said yes. He then asked if he could take my virginity and I told him yes. Okay, so she was 17 at the time of writing, or at the time of this happening. So she she was 17. I don't understand Things it, man. escalated from there, and it's hard to recall specifics from so long ago, especially from Snapchat, where chat history gets deleted. I remember my family had a trip planned to California to visit family for my birthday, and he asked if I would be able to come over to his house to have sex.
That's dude. Oh my god. How how do you even type that out? Why are you, again? Why are you posting your crimes? It's not illegal in California. California was age of consent was raised to fourteen in eighteen eighty nine. Raised to fourteen in eighteen eighty nine. Okay, well that's crazy. Uh, in the nineteen seventies, it has been eighteen. So if you're asking someone who is seventeen and you are like twenty plus years old, you're like twenty two, maybe twenty three years old. You're just posting crimes. I told him it would probably be a long shot because I was still 17. And my parents probably wouldn't let me out alone. My stepdad ended up having- Oh my God, you should not be asking to have sex with people who is not allowed out by themselves because they are so young. <laughs> this is insane. Health complications that made us have to cancel our trip, a blessing in disguise. Although I never went to physically meet him, things continued to be sexual. We called a few times on Discord and he asked me for nudes quite often. I initially told him I wasn't comfortable sending things like that, but I was afraid after a while he would lose interest, so I complied. I what is going through the mind of a person who hears, oh, you're not interested in doing things like that? Mm, okay, well, I, I guess I'll just ask again later on. Do people not take into account like how the other person is perceiving a conversation? If you say, I am not comfortable with this, to the other person, they say, hmm, oh, well, okay, but like, I really want it though. Does this other person not register? that your opinion of them is gonna go down because they're just not respecting your wants. I can't say exactly how many pictures slash videos were exchanged, but it was quite a few. He initiated nearly every conversation because I was too intimidated to message him first in fear of bothering him. All of this went on for around six months when we started messaging less and less. My infatuation died and I was no longer looking through rose tinted glasses. I gained a lot of perspective and felt used. Someone I looked up to That's and awful. admired took advantage of that to get what he wanted. These are That's completely awful. It's again, it's another power abuse situation where this girl looks up to this guy because he has lots of views. He's you know famous online. He has all this money and stuff like that. And she's like, oh, that's really cool. Like he seems like a really cool guy. And then he immediately takes advantage of it and says, can, can I take your virginity? Are you with some nudes? Oh, you don't? Okay, well, uh, are you sure? Like, are you sure? Like, are you are you sure now? Do you want to do it now? The allegations took the internet by storm and fans of Minilad weren't really sure who to believe. But Craig released a statement on the 25th of June that stated, Hi everyone, many of you are probably aware by now of the allegations recently made online about my behavior a few years ago. I have read through everything that was said and shared and understand how unacceptable my actions were. I take full accountability for the inappropriate texts and messages I sent. I regret having said or sent anything that made anyone uncomfortable or upset. I am truly and deeply sorry for what I did. I absolutely should have done what was necessary at the time and that was seeking professional help and not posting crimes. Realizing that my actions were completely unacceptable and working to change my behaviors from the inside out. Moving forward, I fully commit to working on myself, including going to therapy, rethinking and changing some of my life choices and personally apologizing to those I harmed. I know it's hard to believe and I totally get it. I haven't given you a reason to trust me and I know I need to earn it, but that's on me to prove to you. I know there's no righting my wrongs here and I want to express again how sorry I am to the people I have hurt and the fans I've let down. I have a long road of personal searching ahead of me, so that's my focus now. And I will be back when the time is right. Take care of yourself, Craig Thompson slash Minilad. After this statement slash apology, this is when he disappeared from the internet for about a year, right? Craig left YouTube for a few weeks. What? A few weeks? I thought he left for like a year. You have a few weeks? There's no way that you can just scoff up for a few weeks and come back and be like, did you guys forgive me yet? Come on, it's been like, it was it was August and now it's September. So can I can I make funny Mario Kart video again now? He come back on August 12th, 2020, as if nothing happened. His initial video back received a ton of backlash. And the reason for the backlash was because of how he never made a video response to the allegations. And there was word that he moved back to Northern Ireland. A couple days after Craig's initial return to the platform, Hallie uploaded a video speaking about Minilad and the whole situation. Here's parts of her video. I'm gonna show the screenshots again. This is from someone I will not name, but this is at the time where she thought she was helping Craig because she was also a victim of his manipulation and he would use suicide attempts on like telling her he wanted to kill himself to keep her quiet. Jesus Christ, and man. she decided to share me like share with me these screenshots and it's a very brave thing to do and i'm gonna respect her privacy by not naming who she is she basically was told by craig to go to ash um one of the other girls who came out who dealt with way worse way worse um to tell her about her his suicide attempt to make her feel some sort of pity and then was saying to
Wait, Mini Lad messaged someone and said, "Yo, tell Ash that I tried to I tried to Sudoku so that she would feel bad and maybe like what talk to him again." Me, which you'll see now. Um, just how if Ash ever came up about this, she would be killing. She would be the person who's responsible for killing thousands of people because what? of if people found out who he was and fans who count on his videos found out what? about him, they would no. kill themselves. Oh my god! Oh my god! That's it. Th that is the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard in my life. Now, it is true that some people rely quite heavily on YouTubers' videos to balance their mental health. That makes them feel better. It brings them some semblance of joy and happiness. But to come out and say, oh, if I stop uploading videos, then you have killed thousands of people because they're gonna Sudoku themselves. All across the world, thousands of them are gonna Sudoku themselves in mass Sudoku rituals because I can't upload my Mario Kart videos anymore. That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. So you, as a person, as a victim, cannot come out and tell people how you have been victimized by me because if I stop uploading videos, if I get canceled, or sorry, if I get arrested for doing my crimes, then people are gonna Sudoku themselves all across the world. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. How much of a massive ego can you have? How much of a disgusting human being can you be to think you have a right on this platform we already have terrible fucking people on here we don't need you we need you fucking away Facts. we need you actually in getting actual Prison. help after this mini lad knew he had to respond and also throughout this time another minor Bro, what are you gonna say is he gonna make another twit longer saying i take responsibility for my actions turns out it's not smart to say that thousands of people will die because i don't upload my minecraft let's play it's craig and his weird behavior when Craig, Marcel, and Brian hosted a summer camp event. The allegations were deleted, so it's hard to know exactly what Miles was alleging, but during Mini Lad's video called Clearing the Air, he spoke about the situation. This apology video was pretty bad, and it wasn't really even an apology video, it was more so just him saying what was happening. Not only was it short, but it also spoke about the allegations as if they meant nothing. He didn't mention Ash or Hallie, never stated what the allegations were to begin with. And the only thing he did talk about was the situation at camp. Here's That's literally the only play he has, is to make it as vague as possible so the people that already watch his videos and don't know what's going on will be like, Oh, well, I mean, he must have done something wrong. Uh, that sucks. I hope he gets better. Rather than what he actually did, because if he says what he actually did, there's no real, there's no coming back from that. This is ridiculous. At, at this point, there's no coming back from it. That's been going on online lately, whether it's through YouTube or Twitter or places like that. I've been reading a lot of your guys' comments as well, and I wanted to formally address everything. But as well as address everything, I want to talk about a lot of the rumors that are out there and debunk some of them too. But now that some time has passed and I've had time to reflect on everything and get a grand scope of everything that's been going on, I, I wanted to set the record straight. After this all came out, I did make. Okay, I'm. Really curious as to how he's gonna set the record straight at this point. Is he just gonna say the texts are fake? He's like, no, they're fake. It's all fake. It's all fake news. Nothing is real. I've never texted anyone in my life. I've never actually, I've never owned a phone. I've never went online. I've only went online to play Minecraft and do Gmod videos. That's it. I haven't done anything else. Statement on this over on my Twitter, but now I think is the correct time to sit down and make a video addressing it. The first thing that I wanted to talk about with these allegations is I've never physically met them before, nor have I physically abused anybody across the board. Okay, no, no one said that you had though. That is literally not an allegation. You, you have not been accused of doing that. In fact, they said in the Twitlongers specifically that you didn't. That was a part of the original Twitlonger. Why are you even mentioning this? Why are you saying, no guys, it's actually not bad. Turn, I did not physically abuse them. I didn't even hit them. So you can applaud for me now. I want to make people aware of that because those are serious allegations and I wanted to put those rumors to bed. Who Next said that? that? I wanted to bring up that I've seen is people wondering why I went back to Northern Ireland or what the reason that I went home to Northern Ireland was. The main reason- He's gonna be like, oh, I miss my family or something like that. And the only reason is that I wanted to see my family. Oh my God. <laughs> Dude, come on. Okay. On there. Hey guys, I want to add this little bit on here at the end up as there's been some new stuff come out on Twitter and with this situation, I just wanted to address it head on. The situation with the other two people that I said on Twitter was a situation where my behavior was unacceptable and I understand that and I will continue to strive to do better. This new person has come out, has talked about a camp that I did called Camp 17 where it was myself and two other YouTubers where we had- Camp 17? Bro, with 
what you've been doing, I would not call something camp 17. A summer camp where for a few days we got to hang out with some fans. This is a summer camp where I was only around people for maybe about an hour a day. I was staying off campus at a different hotel and everything was securely monitored. This person is accusing me of a few things, so I would like to go through each point individually and debunk them respectively. The first one is a photo that has come out with me and the two other YouTubers that are there, where a picture of us holding her in the air has come out. This is a photo taken during a meet and greet at the very end of the summer camp. This is a situation where people are able to come in, they're able to get a photo, they're able to get one or two things signed, and then they move on. During this, she said that I asked to pick her up. For the photo, she asked if myself and the other YouTubers could hold her up for the photo. So what she's saying here is untrue. The second point she brings up is that I sat too close to her and her friends. This part's quite confusing because everyone sat next to everyone else as a part of regular scheduled programming. At no point was any of us unmonitored as myself, the other YouTubers that were there, also the fans that were there, but there were also adults there and counselors there monitoring everything. So it Oh good, there was adults and counselors. Wow, it's almost like, oh, I don't know. Are you an adult? Yeah, I mean, we knew there was adults there. Is he trying to say that he's not an adult? Also, I figured out why he went back to Northern Ireland. The age of consent is 16, but in California, it's 18. But no point during this entire summer camp was anybody unsupervised. The third point they bring up is they claim- At no point during the summer camp was anyone ever alone with me. They made very sure that no one was ever alone with me at any point. I call them cute and pretty. This is completely fabricated and I did not say this. This is untrue. Like I said in the previous point, at all times during this camp, we were surrounded by camp workers and counselors to ensure the safety of myself and ensure the safety of them and ensure the safety of everyone else. At all times, they could hear everything that I was saying so this could not have happened. For me, I've always wanted to use my platform for good. How did this highly uploaded- Do we have like any of the actual counselors to, to vouch for this? Or are we just saying things? Now, obviously it's impossible to have evidence for every single interaction that you have with someone in real life, but he just says, there's counselors there, so it's impossible for me to have called them pretty. It's like, well, no, it's not. Y you think that the entire time you were always within an ES shot of someone? No, of course not. Another video speaking about Craig and his apology, and she looked very distraught, and she stated, But holy shit, holy shit, I am more pissed. The reason why is Craig uploaded a video clearing the air. Um, haha, <laughs> very funny. Um, addressing everything, he wasn't addressing anything. He debunked rumors that didn't exist, which were people apparently in his mind were like saying we were being touched physically, which wasn't the goddamn case. We never were. We, we would have said that. Exactly, that's what I said. There was no allegations at all of like any kind of physical touch. He's like, no guys, don't worry. I didn't do that. Even though no one said that I did, but I didn't do it. I also didn't steal from Walmart. I also haven't done tax fraud. I haven't done any of those things, even though no one accused me of it. And there were no rumors on Twitter or YouTube that were addressing that we were touched physically. So I don't know where the fuck that came from. And he, he just made it up. Address what exactly he did. <laughs> He didn't, he just said, guys, I didn't touch them and I didn't call them pretty, except the allegations were that you were like basically grooming underage people so that they would come and have sex with you. Didn't mention that at all, which is interesting. He didn't even give me anybody involved in apology because to this day, since we've come out, we are getting harassment every goddamn day. What, by mini stands? There are so many people who are still involved that have not come out because they are scared to deal with that fucking harassment the way we are. At the end of the year, Minilad uploaded a new- That's really sad if that's the case. And that actually is the case a lot of the time on the internet, which every time you see a twit longer of someone being exposed to being a horrible person, there's probably so many more that will never come out. They've had horrible interactions with maybe not even just creators, just people in general that are too scared to come out because they are terrified of being assaulted online by random stands, which happens all the time. You'll get the worst threats in the world just for being honest and telling people that this person that you like is actually a bad person. And since they like them and that being a fan of a YouTuber as part of their personality, they take it as an attack on themselves. And they're like, no, this person can't be bad because if they're bad, that means that I'm kind of bad too. So I'm going to attack you instead. How dare you say that? Apology video called my apology, where he stated that he was depressed and how that wasn't a good excuse, what? but he was going to get help. Here's part no, two. No, dude, you know, okay. I know I'm pausing a lot, but man, you can't just be, upload a video and be like, guys, I had to do it. I was depressed. She's someone who 
who has helped me out a lot. The first thing that I wanted to say was I added Hallie on Snapchat when she was 16. This isn't when I was making any remarks towards her. This is just where I talked to all of my friends. I was that guy that had streaks um, and I wanted to make sure that our streaks were good because back in 2015, that's kind of what people did. Um, it wasn't until 2016 when she was 17 that I first started to flirt with her. <laughs> it's not that much of a difference. It's one year. You could say, oh, but it's it's one year closer to 18 now. It's, we're getting there. I was 21 at the time, um, and that's not okay. Like, and, I, I'm, and I'm aware of that. So with Hallie and both with Ash, uh, I sent the messages around this time and I understand what I'm gonna say next is quite taboo online, but if this is my way of putting all my cards on the table and telling you guys what happened, I feel like I need to say it. The reason I did what I did and there is even a message where I said this is because what I said there is true. Hold on, let me see those other messages first. My actual thought process, very sad around, all around really. Why even before this, I've hated myself for the last year every day. My thought process was she was nearly 18. Doesn't excuse it, but hey, here we are. I'm sorry, I'm scared. I saw that tweet, Haley, sad face. And there was even a message where I said this is because what I said there is true. I did try to end my life at the beginning of 2017. What? I knew she was 17, but I was suicidal. So I s and said to myself, if I'm going to kill myself, I thought I'd go down swinging. What? If I'm going to do this, I'd go down swing. What does swinging imply? Grooming 17 year olds? What? Um, I'm not looking for sympathy. I'm not looking for anything. This is not what this is about. This is telling you guys the reason. And I just want you to understand the headspace that I was in. The reality is I was being selfish. I wasn't thinking about repercussions. I wasn't thinking about anything. I was just being stupid. And I, I really want to apologize for that. I just wasn't thinking and I regret it. I have regretted it since. And for that, for both Hallie and Ash, I'm really sorry. Ash to me, I knew a lot shorter. I may only have known her a few months. Uh, she was a part of a group of friends who my Twitch mods were friends with, and that's how we became friends. This is someone who I became friends with just through association with my friends. Um, and the stuff I sent to her is just not okay either. And that's that's not what I want. It, you know, she was someone that I really did call my friend and it sucks that I let her down like that. I also wanted to point out a message that I sent uh, to Laura, who is a part of my Discord mods. She's someone who I met a few years back, maybe 2016. Um, and she was someone who I considered a friend as well. Whenever we went to Insomnia, we used to hang out and meet up at the booth that Terrorizer and I had, um, and I sent this message. This is from the perspective of the moderator to Craig. Craig is sending messages to her. Uh, Ash has tweeted on her private mentioning writing her own expose. Can you talk to her? Tell her I'm not who I was when I was younger. Tell her my Sudoku attempt. Sure, I'll do my best. Keep me posted. Oh, dude, tell her, tell her my Sudoku attempt. I'm saying, by the way, I'm saying do Sudoku not to bring light to the word. I'm just doing it to avoid like senses. And also that is a triggering word. So I'm trying not to say it as much because I don't want people to, you know, get upset when watching this video anyway. I know it's on the screen, but I'm trying to avoid it as much as possible. Um, That is an insane thing. Like tell her I tried to game end. That is horrible manipulation. What a... What a piece of shit. Whenever I Yeah, guilt tripper. Them, Please guilt tripper. Message, okay. I sent them. I sent them this. This isn't me. That's not right. It's a, it's something that I completely regret. I panicked. I I was scared. I didn't know what to do and I just I love my job so much that I didn't want it to go away and I just wasn't right after this mini lad went dark he deleted all of his tweets and didn't upload to youtube at all throughout this time there would still be updates on mini lad though in february of 2021 the yeah i hate when people say that wasn't me like buddy that was you you may have changed and grown as a person since then but that that was you it was you who did it you were in your own mind when you did it it was the same consciousness it was the same person that woke up in the morning and decided to send those messages it was definitely you that Hollywood did it fix caught mini lad outside and questioned him about when he was going to come back to youtube and he said that he was just taking some time to work on himself several months later in october of 2021 craig uploaded a video where he explained how he was going to therapy and how working out changed his whole perspective of being depressed and how was his own therapy as well. Shortly after coming back to the platform, Minilad deleted both apology videos and it seemed like he was trying to sweep everything under the rug. Even with his first video back, he never stated exactly why he left the platform. He makes it seem like he only left for his mental health, but he left because of something way, way darker. But sweeping things under the rug really didn't work for Minilad. Recently, a creator by the name of TJV uploaded a video of someone donating to 
Dude, he is getting so, he's getting money for this right now. He's getting money on his stream back. Who's who is giving him money? Rick. The donation just points out how people hadn't forgotten about everything Minilad did. Minilad tried to ignore it, but later on addressed the comment and said to get their facts straight, even though everything that was said in the donation actually happened. Those were all facts. Thanks, Ben. Um, hang on them. I don't know what you're saying. I'm gonna go. Uh, so I'm gonna leave you with. I wanna show you. I'm gonna type in memes. I'm gonna try and show you a video that I wasn't planning on watching. So yeah, he has that reaction to it. I've already made a video about it. That's all done. That's old news. I get it. What is new news is that he said something to this person who donated while the memes were playing. So you could not see his face or anything. He turned off his webcam and he said something about this donation. And this is what he said. Oh, by the way, to the person who just donated to me. Uh Okay, so the donation said... Oh, this donation. The donation said, We won't forget what you've done, Craig. Sending and receiving inappropriate texts from minors, threatening these poor girls to keep them silent, and then played the victim. You don't deserve to stay on this platform. And this is his response. Facts straight. Thank you. I'll be back. Oh, he said, get your facts straight. Wait, get your facts straight. There's been nothing to disprove that whatsoever. Like, we've seen text messages we've seen exposés from those people he came out and said i didn't physically touch them which no one accused them of doing at any point how can you say get your facts straight straight when you haven't even disproven anything that they have insinuated what, what do you mean to return to youtube was actually pretty decent he was receiving over 100,000 views at first per Okay, I have to admit that those 100,000 views, they're gonna be from people that hate him, that are hate watching him because they wanna see what kind of car crash he's gonna turn into next. That's got to be the viewership. Every upload, but he'd take another break off of the YouTube platform. And when he came back recently, he has struggled to even crack 75,000 views and even 50,000 views. Let's have a look at his channel right now. So many lads channel, he has rapidly fell in subscribers. He has, Uploaded videos, I, I did have a look at a few of them before I started the stream. He uploads like once every few weeks and they they don't do so hot anymore. They 21K on a five, almost 5 million subscriber channel, 30K. XQC doesn't know how life works, uh, which is a crazy thing to do, which 50, 52,000 dislikes. Uh, as well, and wait, what did one of the, what did that comment Out say? Animals. It says going on to four months without posting. Let's keep it up. Seven months. Woo, keep it up. Oh my god, I don't know what he's posting for at this point because, like, to be honest, that you can you can farm a bit of money from these videos. But if your videos are getting twenty k views, is it truly worth the abuse that you're getting? Who is liking these comments? OGs will always remember your past. You can erase your past, money, but you can't run from it. It will catch up to you. We won't forget what you've done. Four hundred comments and it doesn't look like it doesn't look like he has any fans actually there's not a single comment that is positive or anything this fucker is proud of himself what do you say so fat hold on then you got these guys you want my penis <laughs> it's dumb okay it's dumb it's fucking dumb i'm proud of myself okay and i will uh leave you on that if you want to go ahead and subscribe to bills because he makes fantastic videos then i'll leave the link in the description and if you want to get a discount on gamer subs, then you can. I don't know. It's whatever. You can subscribe for more videos.